Now I leave you with Marcela. Thank you, Jorge. We go on with the agenda of LACNOC. Now, Graciela Martinez Giordano and Guillermo Pereira, who will present the sea cert of LACNIC, honey, the honey net of the sea cert at LACNIC. Thank you all for coming. It's Friday. I hope you are enjoying the event. Guillermo Pereira and Graciela Martinez of the Sea Search of LACNIC. And today we want to talk about the Honeypot Network that we have for LACNIC partners. But before we do, for those of you who don't know us and for those who don't remember us, let me tell you the goal of our CSERT, our target community, and the services we provide. So fortunately, Guillermo explains how biotechnology works. So in the agenda, we are going to, um, I'm going to give you the first part, the honey net of CSERT and how we um, integrate it with uh, Milaknik, it's where the members administer their resources and future step. The Sea Cert of Laknik was created several years ago, um, um, looking for continuous uh, improvement, as is t typically the case of Laknik, and we determined that we could create a Sea Cert. Our target community is Laknik members. Our role is purely to coordinate. We have no authority whatsoever, no oversight, no control on the operations of the associate organizations. But just when we receive a report that involves resources administered by LACNIC or the other associate, we scale up that report to the organization. Of course, we uh, look for the who is contact and we wait until they respond because very often we receive reports that the incident was well reported to the appropriate organization, but they, they haven't had the good response. So we try to scale up to other C cert and always notifying the organization so that it can correct uh, the problems, uh, the, the potential problems. I already told you about the authority and about the services is the following. The International Center for uh, Response defined a service framework covering five areas of services. Not all the C certs have the five areas. It all depends on the scope of the target community and your, the team available. However, at uh, the LACNIC C cert, we chose three services and we chose some functions that we could uh, um, meet. Of course, incident response as coordinators, because if not, uh, it wouldn't make sense to be called a C cert. The second is the situation and awareness where we gather information, we somehow process it, and we take it to the people or the organizations responsible for the resources so that they will become aware of what's happening and also to generate in the region an awareness of the security situation in the network in general, of the latest uh, attacks so that they may get uh, better ready, um, not just to be reactive, but to be uh, are proactive. Uh, that is what uh, sec cybersecurity is all about. And the third axis is in knowledge transfer. And that is why we always try to bring uh, to LACNIC events, we try security conferences that we organize with other organizations. This week, for instance, we had the symposium together with FIRST, where we had a one-day 
um, a conference, and yesterday we had the trainings, and also all in all the LACNIC events, we have a space at CSERTs in the region so that we can see each other's faces. Because when you work in cyber in cybersecurity at the CSERTs, it's very important to establish relations of trust. And now you have the most interesting thing. I invite you to visit our website. We have two reports. One is uh, specific for law in, uh, enforcement because they have more requirements, and then uh, all for the public in general, and then the blog Melaknik, where we also publish uh, uh, security articles. So let me tell you about this project. Uh, I'm going to invite you to uh, uh, join us in this collaborative uh, uh, work. Uh, I here, there you see the projects. That's a website dot uh, uh, um, dot net, and here on top of. Um, uh, on the top of the web, uh, slide, you have what I'm going to discuss. What's a honeypot? A honeypot is a system that mimics, that pretends to be vulnerable. It's exposed in the internet, and the idea is that attackers may find in this uh, server, this service, um, they come in, uh, they do some activity, and uh, they you gather intelligence, you gather information um, of different ways, and we do intelligence with that information. The idea is to collect this, to analyze the behavior of threats, to process it with some blockade. It may be varied. So, as I was telling you, these are potential uh, potential applications to anticipate the attacks. There may be new vulnerabilities. So with this, with these systems, you can anticipate the forthcoming attacks or what's happening at the time. And to collect mal malware, our networks of sensors, the attackers come in, they execute commands, and they download a malware that we store to be able to analyze it later. So these are the compromise indicators with IP addresses, uh, ports, commands, uh, hashes of uh, the uh, various malwares that they download, the URLs, a number of uh, compromise uh, indicators. We extract some of them and we process them. So another uh, other possibilities is to detect compromised systems since uh, what comes to this network uh, is what is considered trash. So those IPs that entered these systems are in the possession of uh, some malicious actors. So we suppose that they are compromised. And Possible applications you can do is to detour these attacks, and if we include some honeypots in the proximity, we can deviate that attention because we know it's vulnerable and sort of to distract them. So there are different types of honeypots. One of the ways of classifying this depends on the type of activity with which they can interact, in which the attackers can interact with that system. So far, we are implementing medium interactivity honeypots, so they go in and they have quite a number of things with which to play around. But this is not a complete system with it where they can do everything. So, it, so far, we are simulating a Linux server but we are considering implementing other types of systems. Those of high interactivity are not so easy to manage. This is because you have to leave a completely real system, and you have to manage this properly. It's not so simple. Now, let us speak 
about our honey net. This is a medium interactivity honeypot network. They are distributed among the members of LACNIC. They're also available in some of the universities. Some also have resources with LACNIC and here we have some national response teams in some of the countries which we trust. Now, the objective is to share data among the participating members. So once the members enter the network, we provide access to a dashboard that comes from the centralizer of all the honeypots. So we have the activities from the entire network. And those who join the network can then see this dashboard. And also to see which are the most frequent attacks, that platform that they access. There we have different types of reports. So this allows us to identify and report this to those who have been affected. So this is done through the Milaknik option where we have we send these through the module we have so that they can see which this other systems that were affected. So this is the schematic representation of the network we have. At the bottom, we have all the probes. We install all these sensors. These report to the centralizing unit. And on the right, we have the dashboard that I was referring to. These are the organizations that join and can visualize this. And on the left, we have the Milaknik security module where we have the information from each of the organizations that were affected. So not only those that join the network of probes, but also those that have access to Milaknik. And then we have MISP, which is a system for exchanging compromise indicators. So if anyone has an MISP, instance installed and wishes to exchange these compromise indicators can write this in the mailing list and then we can connect the system. So this is an invitation. This is a distribution of the sensors or the probes. We have covered almost the entire region. Those in gray are those who are we are interested in joining us. So you have countries from Central America, from Panama, the entire Caribbean. So we would very much like to complete that map. This is just to show you how simple this is. This is a virtual machine that has to be installed for the purpose of having that sensor. It's one gigabyte of RAM memory, 10 gigabytes hard disk drive, and an Ubuntu server. So a couple of statistics for 2023. And this is for those who are interested in joining this. These are the things that you can view in the dashboard. These are the most usernames, the most frequent usernames, and not only the most frequent ones, but you can also conduct queries of those that are least used or those that were used over the past month. So it needn't be the top 10, but by default, this is configured to show the top 10. These are the, this is the origin of the attacks. You also have commands. The most used commands are these we have over here, but this is the first thing that the attackers do when they enter a system. They do recognition of where they are. Is this a honeypot? Is, not, is this not a honeypot? Or is this a virtual machine? So it's interesting. The last command, enable, you can note they're trying to access some kind of router through enable. And then one of the other things that we extract are the URLs, the malicious URLs. Please do not access any of these URLs if you don't know how to analyze malware, but all these are malware. Um, this is a security model that I was referring to. Those of you who can access this module on the left, 
you have the reports and, and under security, and depending on the language you select, they have pie charts showing the number of slash 24s or the slash 48s that were affected. And in this module, you'll not only see things about this project, but also things from other projects like the exposed DNSs in the internet in IPv6, that queries are done and the response is amplified. And in this dashboard over here, you can also see phishing. If we detect situations of phishing, then you have the detail of the URLs if this is a case of phishing. And there's another project whose name I don't quite recall. I think it's IPv6 and IPv4, yes. And well, yes, and for next year, we're going to use further protocols. This is for dealing with DDoS attacks. So this shows a sensor network and also the projects that we're working on. Future steps. We're going to improve the way we collect IPv6 attacks. We have probes for IPv6, and hopefully we can have some more. So if you have IPv6 in some other region, those that are in the map or not in the map, but if you're interested in this, please let us know. We'd like to integrate new types of honeypots. If you, any of you has experience with some other types of honeypot, either routers or other options, we are planning to implement this for next year. And this malware that we collect is done not through much intelligence, but we extract the hashes. But it would be great if we could then take it to some kind of sandbox where we can execute that malware and then conduct the intelligence to see what actions it takes. And then to create a regional network with the system I showed you, MISP, which is for exchanging indicators of compromise. So that would be it. And thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guillermo. Are there any questions? We have time for a couple of questions. Hello, I'm Henry Godoy from the University of Campinas, and congratulations on your work, Graciela and Guillermo. It is not very common to find honeypot data in IPv6. So that data that you are collecting from the probes, are these public or private? And also, how can we obtain the statistics in order to access these? The to obtain this data, this, those who are part of the network of sensors, in addition to providing the dashboard, we also offer CCB, which are text files that can be processed. And these CSV files contain not only these files on a daily basis that are, have the timestamp CAP and the port that was attacked at that moment, the ports that, uh, of that IP. But in IPv6, it's not so simple to receive attacks. But if you have, but we have organizations in Brazil that join us. So maybe if you're interested in joining us, you can speak with us and you can have these compromised uh, indicators. Some IPv6 do attack the network of sensors. Good morning. I'm Eduardo. I have a question regarding the threats, the proactive threats that you can view with day zero attacks, for example, malware that is not detected at the moment. What are the tools that the regional probes have, the ones that you manage, so that these complex threats such as these can then be avoided and can end up destroying a network of an organization or the members?
Thank you for your question. Well, precisely the concept of these probes is so that the network managers can, based on this information, not be reactive, but rather have a proactive attitude to integrate these to some kind of monitoring system that they have in place in order to generate alerts and conduct the analysis of what is happening. But for example, in a complex case, a very big case when malware already has been detected and it comes from several points, what would be the reaction in this case with the probes? Because if you have a threat that can be a day zero threat, how can you mitigate this? Because this can come not only from the IPs, but these can be also attacks to resources or vulnerabilities that you can encounter in software that might not be updated. So how do you deal with cases such as those? Well, we are not conducting that type of analysis of the information contained in each of the sensors. We do have a probe in our own probe. If we were to detect anything there right away, we'll be communicating this to our community, but not publicly, but this would be through direct communications to those organizations because those warnings have to be sent out from the CSERT to the target community. And if it is a day zero situation, it would be great to avoid saying, well, this is happening in the public networks, right? So we send out warnings and communicate this as soon as possible in order to prevent major risks. Thank you. So if there are no further questions, thank you very much, Graciela. Thank you very much, Guillermo. Thank you.